Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we're going to be looking at our monthly qualifier games for the upcoming monthly finals, which are about a week away. So we did face off against uh, SK Gaming and also some other top teams. So first and foremost, going to go through our 7 and 0 games and then we'll move on to SK Gaming at the end. So make sure you're sticking around for that one. So just before we get into today's video, make sure using a code and mine will be greatly appreciated if you're looking to buy anything in the shop. But without further ado, let's jump straight into it. All right, guys, so jumping into the first game. So this is going to be up against Bunker Gold. They have a really good team. They did qualify for a monthly final before. I think they've qualified for one out of two or even two out of two. So really good team. And they also qualified it this month. So really amazing team. So I think this was at... Uh, I think this was the seventh round. So both teams six and zero at the moment. The bands were uh, Ruffs, Max, Stu, and Sprout. So taking this into consideration. So Kalette's always going to be the best mid on this map, especially when Barley's in play, because you can just get so many good supers and healing with the Barley gadget. Kalette always is the best uh, option. So we kind of knew we would go for like a wall break option because everyone knows how good of a Barley Tom is. So we just knew we could still just completely swap the floor with them with this combo. So look at this, literally 40 seconds and we're going to be winning the first game. Let's hop into the next game. All right, guys, so jumping into the next game. So that was a bit of a, uh, <laughs> a bit of a quick one. We really did come out really fast on side of that one. So again, we just picked the same combo. Colette really does beat anyone mid, even like a Rico mid. You can still get good shots off with Colette and the Jesse. Colette will be a Jesse. So basically everything, like I said, that's going to be winning and also it's just really good for that damage a lot of time what you can do you can just super the safe and then as long as you've come serve like three pieces of ammo before you actually super you can super safe and then uh, when you return you can use those three ammos and just cycle your super really quick so that's the way you play claire in the middle for everyone wondering Bali obviously is like one of the best brothers in the meta right now nothing's going to beat Bali lane except for an enemy Bali so that's how good he is and Rico obviously Rico's just really good at scouting the middle and just keeping his lane in general so you see again I get a lot of damage so I do actually actually I'll stay up there some really good heals from that Bali that Bali gadget is so so underrated it can help win so many different matchups so we're only up like nine percent here but we have got a lot of control and a lot of pressure so tom's doing a really good job here of focusing the collect making sure the collect doesn't push up so that she can cycle her super so amazing play from tom i'm able to go up here probably a little bit too aggro here probably should just aim my super towards boss or something because i knew going into it i'll be a little bit weak but still getting that good percentage time so we noticed that we need to be switching matchups carl has got the matchup on tom a lot of times because of tom's gadget so recognize that Ambali also hard counters Rico. So you switch that off. So Tom again is doing really good at keeping the Klet out of the middle. So a lot of the times he can just basically 1v2. A good Bali can do that. He'll conserve his ammo and just make sure they're constantly chipped down. So again, I will cycle my super. Casey gets a nice trade-off with the Cole. And it's all about holding uh control here. So I know I'm a couple of shots away from super. I'll just stay in the bush. I'm just trying to chip him away. You see here, here look how well I actually cycle my super here. So one, two shots, instantly get my super again, get the kill. And then I'm looking for the opportunity again. They do take me down again. I also probably would have sucked my super for a third time. But we're able to close off the game. That's a really well played first in the first set. Let's hop into the next set. All right, guys. So now jumping into the first game of Minecart Madness. So with Max Band, it does leave, well, it doesn't actually leave a lot of options really in the meta. Like uh, Max just opens up the door for so many different combos. And especially on this map. So it kind of leads to more control. So Baron 8-bit still, even with the Baron nerf recently, I've spoke about it. It's just an insane strategy. Like, the only thing that can really consistently beat this combo is the Max, uh, Gene, Sandy, and all those Max combinations. Literally the only way you can really counter this. So as you can see here, they've got amazing mid-pressure. That's the thing that we actually did wrong, uh, mostly inside of this game. We let them just get five gems for kind of no reason here, and we just really got pushed back by the minecart. Uh, well, like, that's kind of inevitable with an 8-bit comp. I spoke about this last time in the other qualifiers, I think, when we faced off against Clash. Like, with 8-bit, when you don't get the first minecart, you kind of, like, straight away just push straight into a spawn. But we should really be trying to fight the battle a little bit harder. We will kind of in VC, saying just to relax and, like, keep control. But, like, really, we should have definitely played a lot more aggressive on the mid because look how many gems they've got. They've just been giving it for free. Like, we're not even contesting here, so... I think we played this absolutely awful. Probably the worst we could have actually set up for this. Even with a minecart, as I said, spawning against us. We could have done a lot better in the middle. So, another thing as well is that the car was like pushed up for such a long time now. And obviously, Crow's pretty squishy, so can't really deal with that. So, they get a 10th gem. Like, 
He's literally been a walk in a park. We literally did nothing to uh, push these guys back. So really terrible start for us in gem grab, but looking to make amends in that in the next game. So let's jump straight into it. All right, so moving into the next game. So they're currently on set point for this one. If you guys don't know as well, it is a best of three in the qualifiers. So every single game we play is a best of three and we play a total of nine rounds. So we really need to win this one to go. I believe it was seven and O oh if we win this. So we actually face a good team quite early on here. Uh, so we decided to keep with Crow because Crow is just really good against Byron. He's decent at range as well, especially if we can get that slow on the calm. We can see here, because I'm not really in a position to help Tom, I can't really get the uh, the call down. He's uh, really tanky, so I can't get him down. But you can see, we switched roles as well because we noticed that really we should be playing 8-bit mid, especially with the Byron. That's the way you kind of play it. So I'm obviously more suited for the mid role. Casey's more suited to go really aggro. You can see here, Casey is just in their face and constantly his. So he's got some good pressure. He's allowed me to pick up some gems. So really well played from him. Literally like uh, two or three gems just literally in my favor because of those spawns. I completely laser Darkum there. And to get that gem, we've got the ninth gem as well. So we really are cruising inside of this one. Like, like I said, like straight away, like we recognize that we we're just playing way too passive. I don't, we don't really have a reason as to why we're playing that passive, but we just were. So me and Tom trying to work on pinching the call. Nice to jump from a Tom, a really good crow, as you guys probably know by now. So just one more gem left. We can easily collect this and run back, especially with the minecart pushing us back. So really amazing at start from us. And I don't think they actually come back from this. Yeah, it looks like we've all cleaned up. Oliver Carl left and nothing he's going to be able to do. So we do take that game right there. So currently one all in this set. Let's hop into the next game. Right, guys, so jumping into the next game of gem grab. I'm just going to say, not going to spoil this one too much, but it does go down to the wire. This is one of the most intense gem grab games I've had in a long time. So make sure you're watching this one for sure until the end. It's literally like a three minute 30 game. It's kind of crazy. So again, they've, I think, oh no, they've put the Amber. So Crow is normally better against Amber, but I just feel like Crow being super squishy doesn't really help him in this matchup. Maybe we're overvaluing uh, Crow a little bit here because uh, you can see Amber's still a lot of uh, HP. Tom gets uh, burnt there, but I think he's with some nice taps keeping Crow alive. And wow, I actually didn't know that. That's what I was talking about in VC earlier. Like, you see him there. Like, Tom was in midair, and Casey Splash still actually hit him. So that's quite interesting. Didn't really know that. But anyways, really good start from us. We get the first five gems. See here, Minecart pushing his back. Probably really didn't need to TP there, but they do get a lot of gems in the middle. I'm basically trapped here by the Minecart. So instead of just running it up and trying to get a kill, I just run back into the Minecart. Like, it really didn't matter because... Uh, gems are going to be in the spawn. I'm going to respawn on full HP. Like, it's still an okay strategy. So, Amber does completely shred my turret. So, probably could have waited to place my turret. I don't really know. It just completely got melted there. So, KC respawned as well. They've always got their 8-bit turret in the back, which is a bit annoying for us because their cyclone there is a lot better than ours. So, KC with a nice splash. So, 6-6 six, six currently. This game is so, so sweaty. So much on the line here. We really need uh, to win this one. So Casey gets tapped up. I think he actually goes down here, which is a bit unfortunate. They're just their Byron is healing a bit like crazy. Like that's one thing we probably should have focused on a little bit more. Was the heals? I do get a gem TP out there, but again, uh, Mummy's just well. Oh, Jordan's doing a really good at uh, taking those down. Uh, so nice kill from KC there. So nine seven up. This is looking really good in our favor. But they have the a bit turret, and here this is really scary. Look how close this was. Like, wow. How didn't I die there? Like, everyone on stream, I remember watching it uh, on Arc stream and the slow motion, uh, like, slow motion did. I did a really, really good job of not going down there because if I went down, that was literally GG, like, for sure. There was no way we are going to be able to win that game. But luckily, we stay up. Got a clutch heal from KC and just in general, like, I placed my turret to, like, tank some shots. Like, it was just really good reaction time. So here as well, I do an amazing job of staying up, if you don't say so myself. Like, the chat was hyping this up a lot because... A lot of the times where it looked like I was going to die, I somehow stay alive. So, again, look how much pressure is on us to get this kill. Tom just manages to get the kill and get the gem. So, it doesn't matter if he doesn't get out, like, as long as he got a kill. So, KC, again, playing really well, but probably overextended it a little bit because now the pressure is on us again to collect those gems. But uh, it should be okay. We've got the mid control here. So, we going to go aggro for that gem, 12. So, we know we've got enough time. It's around it, like every seven seconds that the gem actually spawns out. So we get that one to 13, 13 at the moment. You guys probably know like the countdown, 30 seconds left on this. There's not many gems that actually spawn. It can only go to 29 gems. So 
Tom with a nice jump, getting a little bit more damage, but it's only really tickling 8-bit with those bar and heels behind him. We get the 14th gem, and it's 14 all at the moment. It's all down to this last gem, and it does spawn on our side, which is really lucky. Like, it's got to be said, if I was on the other side, we would have lost, but um, just the gems in general would kind of spawn on their side, as someone hinted. I think I'm, I need to rewatch about properly, but I think four gems spawned on their side at the end, and then two on ours, so kind of in the end was a little lucky but it was just so intense like i could have gone down so many different times i actually didn't don't think i actually died other than my car at the beginning at all there so some really intense games there so we managed to take that win so seven nil up in that let's hop into the next game all right guys so jumping into the uh, round eight games so i'm only showing the final game of this one because uh, i just want to be getting into the round nine ones more than anything so we're facing off against, I think all of these players are Dutch. I know uh, Lawrence and Sam's, they're Dutch. They're really good uh, Dutch players, as I said. So we're facing them off in a round eight. And I think they were actually, they weren't on the same record as us. I think they were actually like six and one, I believe. Six and one, and we were seven and oh. So there was like one team who faced, um, so not on the same record because we were three teams basically at seven and zero. It was us. Uh, SK and then a Polish team. I don't know how to pronounce it. It was like Uchik or something. I don't even know how to say it, but a really good team. So SK faced uh, those who are also 7-0. and zero. And as I said, we're facing some of a uh, different record. But anyway, uh, I think the bands here um, were like a Sprout, Stu, uh, I, can't, I think Byron and something else. I can't remember the other one. But uh, So we kind of went in this combination because just in general, Barley... Surge and Ruff's gonna be good against everything. We didn't really think they were gonna go Poker Double Tank. Poker Double Tank is amazing on this combination, but the combo we went counters mainly the B and Colt. So there's like three combinations that people go. We go this one, uh, which is really good on split. And then some people go Poco Double Tank, so the Frank and the BB and a Poco or like a Jackie or something. And then you've got the comp that counters that. So you have like B and Colt. B and Colt are used so much on this map. So we kind of predicted that they'll go this, but. You can see we're doing a really good job here. We just have to hold it onto that right hand zone. When you're winning it, especially, you only really need to hold on to the right. But I noticed that I can get some good time on here with some good pressure. And Tom said he could basically keep them back from that right side. So I take uh, the decision just to go up and try and win this lane. So again, as long as we're just constantly capturing this one, we should be good in the end because we're both capturing at the same time. And obviously we're winning. So KC does go down here, but it's literally just a pressure. Like as long as you're keeping them back for a while, gonna be pretty good so 95 to 77 percent we're literally uh 20 percent oh looking at a really fantastic here so casey pressuring up we only need five percent now to close off the win so i don't think there's really much these guys can do time is against them and uh, the, the moment they start focusing on trying to get this zone we can just then go over to the other zone so if they're in a really tough spot like we need to get like a team wipe or something to really close off this game so rico's really low tom notices that and there should basically be ggs there because I haven't got much time left yet. As you can see, Tom's getting a good percentage. Casey just comes in and we're able to finish off that game. So currently we are 8-0 moving on to the next stage, which will face SK. Let's jump straight into it. All right, guys, so now moving on to the games against SK Gaming. So the bans for this, we did switch it up a little bit. So we actually banned Bo and Stu because we're not really the best Snake Prairie team at the moment. But uh, going into this kind of ruined it already. But both teams had already qualified because we were both eight and zero and just already we just kind of uh worked it out that we qualified so really nice kill from casey there we recognized like we could go a roughs because a lot of times you're not going to be sitting at the bow totem but like roughs can replace bow in that sense everyone keep getting that extra hp especially when rosa gets that power up she's going to be so so tanky so and the main thing about this one is just really not feeding the Tara because that's the only way they can really group up and kill us. But without that bow totem with Tara, it's going to take a long while for her to get super. So you can see here, all of us just huddled up together. Casey nearly at 9k HP already. Like this rough star power is insane in certain circumstances. So we're just hiding behind here. Just constantly trying to stay together. Nothing they're going to be able to do because we've got those um, Rosa Slows literally at any point in time. We can just Rosa slow them just like how Casey did. And look at this. No chance. These guys have no chance. So really what they should have been doing is uh, probably grouping up together. Like I know, not well, literally we never played with Boband either. And they haven't. So probably 
uh, off the back of it, they probably realise that they have to group up a little bit more with Tara because like Piper and Ross, they have no def defence against a Rosa. So we also noticed as well, probably the most important thing from when I've played Power League uh, like in the past or just other things when Bo's been banned, like I think Rosa is the number one pick because you've got them slows and it's really hard to actually take her down once she cycles her super. So here I'm in a corner, but it's taken them a long while to actually take me down. So I don't really mind going down there. So Tom gets a nice, uh, nice trade off with Jetson and then Casey playing really well, playing so sneaky. And as long as he's not getting tapped up and staying at full HP, he's going to be playing really well. So that's the first game of Snake Prairie right there. Let's hop into the next game. All right, guys. So hopping into the next game. So we just kind of thought... Like, again, we didn't practice at all with a bow band, but we just wanted to like, a bit, have a little bit of fun, you know. So we went Amber because we thought with a slow, we could get the first kill just exactly like that. So the perfect start for us is exactly what we wanted. We know with Amber as well, she can just use her gadget and get the super straight away. That's kind of our thinking with it, like break up as much grass as possible so they don't sneak in. But with these Rosa Slows, it can be really hard. And especially against like a Tara as well. If we give Tara too much value, it's going to be really hard. Like no one can really go against Tara. So Tom gets caught out a little bit here, uh, which he has the blue stars. The only one that couldn't die. So I think that was the main reason here. I've not watched these games back uh, since, but that Tom kill was really, really bad. So Jet in here, I've just got a pet constantly at my heels. If I don't think if I had that pet on me, probably could have focused a little bit more and got Jet down. But unfortunately, we can't get him. Uh, which is going to be crucial. Like, if I got that kill, we could have actually just sit back. Like, somehow they broke our defense way too easily. I think the setup was just a little bit wrong. But still, one minute left. All we need to do is get the kill on Jetson. So, we just need Tom's super here. I think we still have a KC slow, so we can still get the kill. Uh, so, we know Jetson is over to the left, and he's the player we should be calling out and coordinating with. So, Tom, unfortunately, well, he does get the kill here, but. Uh, Jet and does stay alive. So I feel like all of us should have probably either, uh, well, no, more, more so just focused towards Jet. And, like, he's the one with all the stars. But again, we're still only three down. We really need to get the kill on Jet and, and then we are winning. But uh, we know, like, Jet and is an amazing Tara. He's got 6.3k HP as well. The thing about Ruffs on this map is there's no way Ruffs can deal with a Rosa at the moment. Probably pre nerf, Ruffs could have done a decent job against Rosa. But not here. So yeah, they're going to be able to win this one. So I think I feel like we just let them come back into the game. It's really hard to push back, obviously, against a Tara and a Rosa. Like our beginning strategy actually worked, but just the execution was a bit poor on our end. But really close game there. Let's hop into the next game. All right, guys. So jumping into the final game of Snake Prairie. So again, this is a uh, best of three, best of three. So kind of need to win this one to go one nil up in a set. So both teams just mirror straight away. I think we both just recognize that this is the best combo. So Basically, mirror matchups both way around. I think Tom probably pushed up a little bit too much because uh, I think the roughs actually helped Tom, uh, well, helped Jet with the lane. That's why he lost that ma matchup, unfortunately. So, really bad on our side of things. But again, this is just going to probably be a little bit boring. I don't think I really need to show this one. It's a good job I actually got this skip function. So, I probably am going to go ahead and skip him because this is just a little bit boring. So, basically, all we're really doing is just sitting back. We don't want to be feeding them any power ups. We know we've got our uh, we've got our slows left for the last little bit of the game, so I'm just gonna skip this. No one wants to see us just sitting in a bush with Snake Prairie. So actually, wait, I went up a little bit too fast there. So let's rewind that a little bit. So nearly actually caught off with the options. So we use a slow straight away because we've got 30 seconds left, and Casey's still got three of them left, I think. So we can push up here. Smash. It's just gonna go straight for me, but I get a good knot back. So this is quite chaotic. I don't know actually what happened with Tom and Jetson here. So I'm going to be rewatching this for the first time as well. So there's some really close engagements. Unfortunately, Jetson does get his super, takes down Tom, and that's going to be basically all she wrote. So you can basically tell that we're really bad at Snake Prairie. It's probably, all, it definitely is our worst uh, map in my opinion. It takes a lot of coordination, and you saw with our monthly finals last time around that we were really bad at it, and still we're improving, but just literally execution that we really suck on. So they're going to be taking the Snake Prairie set right there. Let's hop into the next game. All right, guys. So jumping into Kaboom Canyon now. So this is a bit of a flashback because in the last qualifiers that we beat SK with, we faced them on Kaboom and at once. So they definitely wanted some vengeance. As you guys probably know, the top two teams really, I think, at the moment, uh, SK and Clash, just based off uh, pure results. Like they've been the ones that have had the much better results the last two months so these are going to be the hot forms in team to face off against and also semantic and ex teammates so there's always a bit of rivalry there even though semantic and those are like still really good friends i really respect semantic as a player and as a person so there's no bad blood in it whatsoever but 
like you can't lie there's, there's always a bit of rivalry with us and you always see it so they get a good pressure there so what i would say about their uh strategy is that they went with the max and the crow down the left hand lane we probably should have done that and mirrored it straight away because they've got that grass control like normally it's whoever's in that middle it's going to be the team that's going to be much better off so you can see here i'll just go extremely aggro on the crow uh Symantec did miss time his super there don't think that was really the best but then again he used his slow and confirmed the kill on me so still managed to make up for that sort of main reason why this combo is so good there's no byron in play there's no byron collect you can't really go collect without the byron because there's so much crow in this meta like <laughs> crow can just slow collect and just kill her so easily that's the main worry so again i'll go down the right hand lane so you can see i'll just get really good pressure that's the main thing that i'm trying to do with max is just get crash uh pressure pressure get them in a really awkward position and just keep firing down so you see him doing a really good job of uh tickling down the safe there tom he's just going to run up as well so crow's going to get some good damage on our safe though which isn't the best they actually managed to equal it up so i don't know if that was the right call from tom because most of the time uh whenever like uh a crow is on the safe i do call most like most of it just to leave him because he doesn't do too much damage but here semantic gets super at the right time does a lot of damage to our save so things just really crumble there i think there was a few miscommunications we uh, all went down one lane as well and amber fire like melted two of us so again i feel like we really don't play that badly like you can see it in the gameplay like we are matching them in terms of gameplay but i just feel like a little bit of their execution is just so much better and they just that's what good teams do they manage to win even in bad scenarios and we had the full front and they just took it straight off us so really well played from sk they managed that really well to come back and get the win away from us so that's going to be uh the first game right there let's hop into the next one all right guys so jumping into the next game of kaboom and canyon so both teams mirror matchup again so i don't i really don't feel like anything actually beats this combination like there can be a few things that can be decent against it i feel like if we went uh like a next level strategy that a lot of people do go on if you've seen it on kaboom canyon i don't know if you guys have actually seen it in the monthly uh finals last time around the poco gadget it does have like the new poco gadget it has one good usage and it's against crow like that's the only way i've seen that poco be viable so what people normally do when there's a lot of crow on a certain map they'll use that poco they use that gadget so basically what this does it just nullifies crow's gadgets so crow's got three slows poco's got three gadgets to just basically remove all his slowing effects and then after that crow basically like he isn't really the best because it relies a lot on slowing down enemies and confirming kills so you see here literally a minute gone on and nothing really done here kind of choke it a little bit probably could should have got the kill on semantic so yeah that was a bit bad for me i should have really just got a kill on semantic and then if I got a kill and went off to the left it would have been really good but still we managed to do really well so instead i think tom will follow me up he should have just gone back and killed the max because uh well actually no it's close to jump actually so that, that was that was okay i think he must have called out in vc that it was close to jump so he gets a nice jump on a safe and we are leading so yeah that was that was why he did it last time around so the only way that crow goes up onto that safe is if he's close to his jump because other than that he doesn't do a lot of damage at all as you can see so i've wasted so much time again uh getting a lot of percentage so i feel like i played really well on max in this game uh for sure 50 seconds left we are in the lead again so it's this time again like we're in the lead we're in a good position but we just can't seem to close out in these points so they've got mid control here we probably needed to work a little bit more on getting that middle control because they're really pressuring us back uh i'll get max speed probably should have saved it for kc as well but then again they do the same thing that's kind of what i wanted like we needed to keep the pressure up we needed uh to get into their faces so they retaliate with the same thing semantics got jump here recognizes that tom is low so really nice jump from him and we're going to get quite a bit of damage so casey goes down as well and they're going to be taking that lead straight off us so only four percent down again uh i think tom in vc called out for us to like speed up what we should have done is just waited for casey and then sped up and then casey could have won his lane and we probably would have won the games there so a few unfortunate mistakes but it wasn't too costly in the end because like like i said like both teams already knew we had qualified so not the end of the world losing to sk gaming but some really fun games there some really intense ones so ggs to sk gaming they're an amazing team and they did deserve the win for sure inside of this so that's going to be the end of today's video let me know if you enjoyed this one we're in the monthly finals i think next sunday so make sure you're tuning in for that one and we do have a pretty big announcement soon so make sure you're staying tuned for that one but that's gonna be it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to like comment 
subscribe, use code SPEN in the shop, and I'll see you guys next time.